Mr. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, my application for this debate was submitted just before Parliament broke up for the conference recess. It was triggered by the decision of HMRC to close down eight of its in-house nurseries in the estate without any debate, consultation or negotiation. Things have moved on significantly during the intervening period, but many old and new questions remain unanswered, unanswered which is why the debate is still pertinent and necessary. Mr Speaker, I know that the Minister is committed to childcare. On the 17th of October 2011, he told the House that the Government's strategy on childcare and work involved, and I quote, encouraging parents into work by promoting safe, good quality childcare and providing incentives and wider options to encourage more employers to support childcare provisions for their staff. I fear, however, that the Government's commitment has somehow not cascaded down to senior civil servants in his department, HMRC. And let me explain why, by running through a whistle-stop tour of events. In late August, HMRC advised that they had unilaterally decided to close eight nurseries. The nurseries were all part of a relationship between HMRC, Maple Estates Limited, who owns some of the HMRC estate, and Bright Horizons, the actual nursery provider. My immediate concern, as you will understand, was the welfare of the 86 families whose children attend the custom-built nursery inside HMRC East Kilbride in my constituency. I imagined in my mind's eye that HMRC would have done their homework and I would be, I would be presented with incontrovertible evidence that the nursery was grossly inefficient or that the numbers of children using the facility were too low, too low to sustain an in-house provision. So I have to admit it was with some trepidation that I wrote to HMRC to find out their reasons for the proposed closures. I received a response from a Mr Mike Falvey, the Chief People Officer at HMRC, who, for reasons which will become obvious, probably holds the most inappropriate job title in the civil service. Mr Falvey explained in his letter dated 5 September that the current contract between Bright Horizons and Maple, originally ran for five years, had been extended twice and could not be extended again. He advised that a further contract needed to be retendered, and the HMRC had chosen not to do that. I give way. I'm grateful to the Honourable Gentleman. I congratulate him on securing this debate, and he'll know that very early in this process, he and I had discussions about this matter, primarily, of course, because my own constituents were affected, and we're also, when he goes into, further into the debate, involved in some of the changes that have taken place. But does he not think that the notice period that was given here truly was appalling, a period of three months for young children to be located elsewhere, and that there was inadequate thought given by HMRC to the way in which uh, they should try and help a commercial solution. I, think, uh, I agree entirely with, with the, the Honourable Gentleman, but I think he's going to be even more appalled when I go further into what I have to say this evening, because not only did he advise that a future contract needed to be retendered, and the HMRC had chosen not to do that. He further advised that there were only eight nurseries out of more than 300 HMRC offices, and that HMRC did not provide the same childcare service for all staff. And he finally advised that the number of parents using the nurseries was declining, and most importantly, that only a third of the spaces were used by children of HMRC staff. There was only one problem. Mr Speaker, none of this information provided by a civil servant who is paid more than the Prime Minister was accurate. I found out several weeks later that the deal between Maple and Bright Horizons, which the Honourable Gentleman might want to listen to this point carefully, the deal between Maple and Bright Horizons had the provision to be extended for an additional year to November 2013, something that had never been disclosed to me by civil servants. And I found out that even if the eight in-house nurseries run by Bright Horizons were closed by HMRC, they still would have in-house nurseries, including a very large nursery in the constituency of my right honourable friend, the member for Newcastle upon Tyne East. And finally, and I consider this a piece de resistance, 63 of the 86 children at the nursery in my constituency were the children of HMRC staff. Will so, my honourable friend give way? I will. Um, I thank my honourable friend for giving way and he's already starting to set out a powerful case. I understand that the nursery at Castle Meadow in my constituency currently has a 76% occupancy rate. Over the half of the users are HMRC staff and the nursery's outdoor play area has only recently been upgraded. Does he 
agree with me that this also calls into question the account we've been given of a service that's in decline. It, the right hon. Lady is, is absolutely correct. It does call into account the decision it was taken, and the decision that I was given was riddled with similar inaccuracies. And, uh, that's why, armed with the knowledge that I had found out that the HMRC rationale for the closure in my constituency was fallacious, I called Mr Fowley. I explained to him that the arguments he presented were just plain wrong, and I asked that, in the light of this reality, would he agree – just a modest request, Mr Speaker – to, to review the decision in full or part. The Chief Poli Poli People Officer refused point blank to do so. And it isn't difficult, Mr Speaker, to see why HMRC came 36 out of 37 government departments last year in the Industrial Relations League table. Perhaps, Mr Speaker, they are going for 37th place, place this year. But I dig digress ever so slightly. Mr Speaker, after a setback, I contacted the Minister's office to arrange to discuss this matter, feeling strongly as I did that senior civil servants could not dismiss the concerns of elected members of Parliament in such a shoddy manner, particularly as their decision to shut the nurseries was so obviously based in full or in part on erroneous information. Alas, the Minister refused to meet with me, claiming that the issue that I wanted to discuss was operational. No further explanation was provided by the Minister's private office. But, Mr Speaker, when you are running out of cards to play, politics can sometimes be a frustrating place. But if you don't mind the it's a knockout analogy, I played my joker just before recess, applying for an adjournment debate before we packed up and left. And whatever gods exist, be they mortal or otherwise, my debate topic was picked for this evening. But I didn't want to wait until this evening to raise the issues. I wanted a resolution, and I had a duty, in my view, to look after my constituents and their children. So I once again pressed HMRC on the subject, and I set up a call with the Chief Executive, Lynn Homer. Ms Homer was previously the Chief Executive of the UKBA, and then the Permanent Secretary of the Department for Transport, where she worked on the West Coast Mainline contract. I spent 45 minutes on the telephone with Mrs. Ms Homer on 21st of September, only to find that the, HMR, that the reason HMRC wanted to close down the nurseries had nothing to do with the reasons set out in Mr Falvey's 5 September letter. I was advised for the first time that the decision was being made to rationalise the HMRC estate to save money on rent. Ms Homer confirmed again to me... Can we? I thank the Honourable General for giving way and also for coordinating the letter and for showing leadership on this issue. Does he agree that one of the very strange things here with regard to the problem with the estate is that um, the, the buildings that we are talking about in most cases um, will remain empty. Another reason why this needs to be looked at again and uh, a moratorium, moratorium on these closures for now until we get the real facts um, so we can make a proper decision. I agree entirely with the, the honourable gentleman and that's something I'm going to expand on in a moment because as I said I was advised for the first time that the decision was being made to rationalise the HMRC estate based on saving money on rent and Ms Homer confirmed again despite my reasonable request for a review and a suggestion from me personally on how to keep the nurseries open under new arrangements that the closures would go ahead regardless. But Mr Speaker, uh, I will suspend this belief here, but even with this new information, it did not make any difference to the nursery in my constituency and possibly others, as the honourable gentleman has alluded to. And let me explain why. The nursery contract is between Maple Estates and Bright Horizons. HMRC provide the space for free as part of their now defunct commitment to family-friendly policies. They plan to shut down the nursery in my constituency, leave 86 families, 63 of them HMRC families, searching for new childcare provision. And do you know what was going to happen to the vacant space in East Kilbride in my constituency, which the taxpayer would continue to pay rent on? Absolutely nothing. HMRC would continue to pay the full rent to Mapley till at least 2015, the only difference being that a wonderful, fully equipped, custom-built nursery would lie empty, gathering cobwebs. Mr Speaker, you could not make it up. In view of this new information, I made a further request to meet the Minister, and this time my request was granted. And Mr Speaker, lo and behold, a decision has now been made to keep the nursery in my constituency and another in Cardiff, in the Honourable Member's constituency, open. Honourable Friend, I am um, um, very, very grateful to my Honourable Friend for giving way, and I should pay tribute to his tenacity in pursuing this issue. And I am, of course, delighted that his nursery in East Kilbride and apparently the one in Cardiff will remain open, but the one at Leicester's Saxon House 
will not remain open, even though it is oversubscribed, even though there is many, something in the region of 15 staff on maternity leave who, when they return, want to use that nursery. So does he agree, with, as I agree with the Honourable Member for Leeds, that when the Minister gets up, he should announce a moratorium on these closures because children are going to face upheaval and, that, and staff are going to be made redundant? I agree entirely, and I think you'll, you'll see where I'm going in the rest of my contribution about why that's something that the, the Minister should actively consider. But uh, the decision to keep two nurseries open was confirmed to me when I met the Minister and the Chief Executive at a meeting on 3 October. But I have remaining issues which I wish the Minister to address, Mr Speaker. The first is a package offered by HMRC to keep East Kilbride and Cardiff open. It's based on my original proposition to Lynn Homer, offered on the 21st of September, that the accommodation could and should be utilised as a nursery until at least 2015 under new arrangements. However, Mr Speaker, that offer was made in ignorance of the knowledge that a clause already existed which enabled the eight nurseries to remain open for a further year to November 2013. And I would therefore make a formal request to the Minister this evening to review the package offered on the grounds that his civil servants apparently did not know that the clause to extend the lease existed. This new information should allow the nurseries to continue, all the nurseries in my opinion, Mr Speaker, to operate for a further year on the current terms and conditions. My second request to the Minister relates to the behaviour of his senior, of his senior civil servants, Mr Speaker. On 5 September, for different reasons, I asked the Minister of State in the Cabinet Office at Cabinet Office questions for a review, for a review of the Civil Service Code. The Minister of State advised that the Minister for the Cabinet Office and Paymaster General had recently issued the first steps in the Civil Service Reform Programme which sought to enlarge the area of accountability for senior civil servants. Mr Speaker, Mike Falvey, HMRC's Chief, Chief People Officer, provided me with false information about why HMRC proposed to shut the eight nurseries. HMRC have denied they had knowledge that there was a clause between Mapley and Bright Horizons to extend the life of all eight nurseries for a further year, although that denial does fit rather ill at ease with the chronological order of events, which would have us believe that Bright Horizons attended a meeting in May 2012, were told that they would be shut down in November 2012, and nobody mentioned the extension clause. I find that extremely difficult to believe. In any event, the Chief Executive presided over this debacle until the 3rd of October, when there was a Damascus-like change of heart, curiously coinciding that day with my meeting with the Minister. So my question to the Minister is this. Does he deem the actions of his senior civil servants as incompetence or as an attempt to mislead a Member of Parliament or indeed Members of Parliament? If it is incompetence, what is the Minister going to do about it? If it was an attempt to lead members of parliament, what is he going to do about it? Mr Speaker, I represented civil servants of all ranks as a full-time trade union official for most of my working life. Had a junior civil servant showed the same degree of incompetence or provided false information to a senior civil servant, they could have expected the sharp end of a capability or disciplinary process, and more often than not, in my experience, that would have led to a dismissal. Senior civil servants cannot be protected or insulated from the consequences of their behaviour. People expect their parliamentarians acting on their behalf to be given accurate information from government departments when they request it, particularly about decisions that have been made. This debacle was presided over by two of the Minister's most senior civil servants, and I have concluded had it not been for the backing of PCS, the trade union representing staff in HMRC, had it not been for the local campaign in my area by the families and indeed the children who campaigned to keep their nursery open. And I am utterly convinced, Mr Speaker, that if this adjournment de debate this evening had not taken place, with the ability to shine some light on this fundamentally flawed process the HMRC have followed, the nurseries thus far would not have been given a reprieve, and I believe it is incumbent that all the nurseries involved are now given that same reprieve. So, Mr Speaker, I am most grateful that the procedures of the House of Commons have come to the rescue, and so are the 86 families in my constituency. That said, those self-same 86 families and countless others were left in limbo and worried and put under tremendous stress 
about their children's future childcare arrangements. That is a matter that cannot be swept under the carpet, and I therefore hope and expect that the Minister can answer the direct questions that I have put to him this evening. The Minister, Mr David Gork. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and may I start by congratulating the Honourable Member for East Kilbride for securing this debate. Uh, and I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts that he has made to pursue this issue on behalf of his constituents. Uh, alongside that, I know of the equally determined efforts of my uh, honourable friend, uh, the member for Cardiff North, to represent his constituents, and indeed uh, other uh, honourable members who have uh, made their remarks uh, this evening. Now, as we are all aware, HMRC's core purpose is to collect tax and distribute benefits. Uh, that is what it was set up to do and where its efforts and resources need to go. Now, of course, HMRC also has a duty to be a responsible employer to its staff. And uh, I very much appreciate that the decision to close eight on-site nurseries has been controversial. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, this provides an example of the difficult balance that public services often need to strike between their public obligations and their responsibilities to their own staff. Uh, now, as has already been alluded to by the Honourable Member for East Kilbride, uh, I am not responsible for the day-to-day -day management decisions of HMRC, which is a non-ministerial department, but I am the minister to whom HMRC is accountable for its core duties, uh, which is why I am responding uh, tonight. Uh, for the record, I think that HMRC's management decision was broadly the right one, although I agree that HMRC's execution of that decision uh, could have been better handled and has caused regrettable upset and uncertainty among parents of the children in the eight nurseries. Uh, now, the honourable members for East Kilbride and Cardiff uh, North and indeed uh, other honourable members have made a number of important points and I will deal with them. Uh, but it is important to understand why HMRC made the decision it made. As I understand it, uh, the on-site nurseries were originally set up at a small number of locations where HM Customs and Excise and the Indian Revenue were experiencing recruitment difficulties amongst younger workers. Uh, the nurseries helped them to attract and retain parents of young children at a time when there was no other provision for childcare in HMRC's legacy organisations. Uh, over the years, the number of these nurseries has declined, and across the eight nurseries that we are discussing tonight, which are run by a private nursery provider, Bright Horizons, uh, there has been a decline both in the take-up of places overall and of the proportion of places used by HMRC staff, and I'll come back to that point. Uh, in fact, across all eight nurser nurseries, only just over a third of places are currently taken up by HMRC employees, but I do recognise that this was not the case in uh, East Kilbride, and Cardiff, where more than half the spaces are taken up by children of HMRC staff, as is also the case with the Nottingham site. Uh, however, HMRC made an operational decision to end and not retender the contract for these nurseries for perfectly understandable reasons. First, in line with government objectives, HMRC's estate strategy is to reduce the size of its footprint and either to hand back unwanted space to its landlord or to make more productive use of the estate that it retains. Um, I, I will give way on that point. Can the Minister explain why it's, how it would be government policy to waste, waste taxpayers' money by giving up space which you would, you would then have to continue to pay rent on and leaving custom-built nurseries lying empty when they could be utilised by staff? Well, on, on that very point, the Honourable Member uh, rightly said that we had a meeting on this matter. Indeed, Lynn Homer was present for that meeting. And uh, he should be aware that Lynn Homer repeatedly said that it was possible that the, the site at East Kilbride could have been used, could be used, uh, for uh, other purposes before 2015. That is, that is, uh, that, uh, that I have to say is what the Honourable Member was told repeatedly in the meeting. And if he is accusing me of saying an untruth or whether he's saying uh, that Lynn Homer was not saying that, I'd be grateful to hear it. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'll be absolutely clear. I have given you 
evidence that I've been com given completely misleading, misleading information by civil servants in HMRC, which was not true from day one. I am further saying to you, uh, Minister in the, in the Chamber tonight, that, that the space in East Kilbride will be empty until 2015, and this was confirmed to me in a telephone con conversation by the Chief Executive Lynn Homer on the 21st of September. Well, uh, point one is this is a somewhat hypothetical uh, situation because, as he well knows, uh, the site will remain used as a nursery. But I have to tell him, and, and uh, in the meeting that we had, uh, Lynn Homer corrected the Honourable Member on a number of occasions. She did not say that it was not going to be used until 2015. What she said was that there were no immediate plans for reuse, but she was not ruling out the, the reuse of that site before 2015. That is a fairly substantial uh, distinction, and that is what uh, she was, the Honourable Member was told. And if he didn't understand that, then uh, that is regrettable, but that was what he was told repeatedly in that meeting. Um, Mr Speaker, uh, it is worth pointing out that in the 18 months to October 2012, HMRC closed 140 buildings uh, and rationalised the further 44. This has resulted in nearly £47 million worth of savings annually and reduced HMRC's estate by around 193,000 square metres about 16% of its total estate over that period. The space is left when the nurseries close will be used for HMRC's core purpose. Retaining space for on-site nurseries uh, simply does not fit into this strategy. Uh, second, given the low nursery occupancy by HMRC staff, the justification for HMRC retaining these eight nurseries is no longer as strong as it was. Uh, this is the, particularly the case uh, now that HMRC, like other public sector employers, provides childcare vouchers to all eligible staff which they can use to pay for childcare in any nursery they choose. Uh, these cover staff in more than 300 HMRC offices, far more than the eight affected by the closure of the nurseries. And in making the decision not to retender the contract with Bright Horizons, HMRC researched the local areas and was confident uh, that other nurseries had spaces at prices comparable to and often lower than the places in the Bright Horizons nurseries. Uh, third, and most importantly in my view, HMRC was uh, providing space to the private sector nursery provider free of both rent and utility bills. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do not believe that it is sustainable for a government department effectively to provide a direct subsidy to a profitable private company during these times of austerity, public bodies have a duty to make more productive use of the resources that they are paying for. As I said, I believe HMRC's decision was the right and responsible one, but I also think it could have gone about it better. Now, we've heard criticism that HMRC did not provide sufficient notice to parents. I agree that more notice would have been preferable, but the fact is that HMRC was honouring the contract between the estate's provider and Bright Horizons, and the contracts between Bright Horizons and the parents, which were for three months' notice. HMRC effectively gave Bright Horizons six months' warning that the contract would end in November 2012, but Bright Horizons chose not to tell parents earlier than the three months' notice provided for in their contracts. HMRC could have told its own parents earlier, but it is possible that HMRC may have then been liable for compensation claims from Bright Horizons. The Honourable Member for East Kilbride has made uh, public statements to the effect that HMRC deliberately gave short notice in order to curtail debate. Uh, that allegation is inaccurate and unfair. Uh, HMRC, as Honourable Members would expect of a public body, was seeking to honour the terms of legal contracts. It is also important to observe that Bright Horizons was given time to seek alternative accommodation for its nurseries, but made a commercial decision not to relocate and instead to close these eight nurseries. Uh, that was not HMRC's decision, that's down to Bright Horizons, but it's perfectly understandable, bearing in mind that they would need to pay market rent for other properties and that the take-up of places was, I understand, declining. Now, we've heard questions about why HMRC didn't extend the contracts for another year or two, or at least extend contracts in the nurseries with high HMRC occupancy. Uh, this was a single contract for all eight nurseries, 
So it's not possible within the contract to extend any individual nursery alone. It was all or none. Uh, also, at the time that the decision was taken, HMRC honestly believed that the contract could not be extended. Now, this was not a contract directly with HMRC, but between Bright Horizons and HMRC's landlord, Mapley, and HMRC was not party to all the details. In fact, as it later transpired, HMRC's original belief was incorrect, and the contract could have been extended another year for all eight nurseries. But in any event, at no point did Bright Horizon ask for an extension to the contract when HMRC opened discussions with them in May 2012. Now, I have to say it is highly regrettable that HMRC did not have all the correct information, but that does not alter the reasons why it wanted to end the on-site nursery provision. And nor does it mean, as the Honourable Member for East Kilbride uh, has alleged, that a senior HMRC official deliberately misled him, simply do not see that there is the evidence to support that allegation. Uh, I will give way, although time is short. I see that time is evaporating fast, and I don't want him to finish before he answers the direct questions I put to him. But in terms of the point he has just made, I was provided on the 5th of September by reasons by Mike Falvey, the Chief People Officer, uh, when I spoke to Lynn Homer on the 21st of September, a, compl a completely different reason was, was given. Can you explain that? And can, can the Minister explain that, Mr Speaker? And can the Minister also answer the two points I put to him when I made my original contribution before he finishes? Well, let, me, let me make as much progress as possible, but I believe that the letter he received in early September was based on a genuine understanding from HMRC as to what the situation was, because it related to a contract between uh, Mapley and Bright Horizons. Uh, but in his uh, subsequent conversation with the Chief Executive of HMRC, she set out uh, more fully the context and the reasons uh, why the decision was made. Um, now, can I turn to the point that the Honourable Member has made, that it, um, uh, the Honourable Member for East Kilbride has made, that suggested that HMRC cannot reuse the nursery space for any other purpose? Uh, and that is simply not correct. What HMRC cannot and should not do is commit long term to giving part of its estate over to nursery provision when it needs the flexibility to use that estate for its core purpose, where it can't to negotiate it giving back to its landlord. Now, um, Mr Speaker, as we've heard, things have moved on since this adjournment debate was granted, and I think HMRC has reached a better outcome. HMRC has shown itself responsive to staff concerns and to the representations from the Honourable Members for Cardiff North and East Kilbride. When staff asked HMRC to consider transitional support, it swiftly put a package of such support in place, including some short-term financial relief for parents facing higher nursery costs and flexible working arrangements to allow parents to search for and settle their children into a new nursery. HMRC also reopened discussions with Bright Horizons and asked it to consider whether it would enter into a different commercial arrangement at the three nurseries where HMRC staff accounted for at least half of nursery places under new contracts. Uh, I'm pleased that Bright Horizons has agreed to a new and separate temporary lease in East Kilbride and Cardiff, but Bright Horizons has made clear that it does not see a commercial case in the third site in Nottingham. Uh, this new lease uh, with regards to East Kilbride and Cardiff will run until August 2015, at which point uh, Bright Horizons would need to relocate the nursery if they wish to continue. HMRC will not end the lease before that time, although Bright Horizons will be able to close or relocate the nursery at any point before August 2015, provided that they give HMRC four months' notice, more than the customary three months' notice. I know this does not cover all of the sites affected, but I do believe that this is a sensible outcome. It provides a reasonable package of support for parents affected at all eight nursery sites and two and a half years more nursery provision at Cardiff and East Kilbride. The long-term outcome is the same. Order. Order. The House stands adjourned.